This presentation will review high-level findings from a Boulder County needs assessment related to system services and supports for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Boulder County Department of Housing and Human Services, with the support of the Boulder County Commissioners, hired Omni Institute and Keystone Policy Center, both Colorado-based organizations, to conduct a countywide assessment to explore the needs of individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The presenters for this recorded webinar, along with contact information, are listed here. My name is Emily Murillo from Omni Institute, a Denver-based nonprofit social science consultancy that provides integrated research and evaluation, capacity building, and data utilization services to accelerate positive social change. And my name is Lorez Meinhold. I'm with the Keystone Policy Center. The Keystone Policy Center is a nonprofit organization founded in 1975, created to drive actionable shared solutions to key issues of the day, and is focused, in, focused on fostering collaborative and sustainable outcomes through the following values of equity and inclusiveness, meeting people where they are, and coll collective action. Today's presentation will include an overview of the project and the research methods used. Um, it will include key stakeholder themes and priority areas and provide a high level overview of recommendations. Boulder County voters approved the Developmental Disabilities Property Tax in 2002 to fund programs for individuals with developmental disabilities and their families. Boulder County Department of Housing and Human Services states that they're committed to ensuring that county mill levy funds are utilized efficiently and effectively with up-to-date information about the needs of the IDD community. This needs assessment sought a wide range of feedback from individuals with IDD, from families, from direct service providers, and community partners to understand the positive impacts of mill levy funds as well as gaps in the services continuum that could be addressed through future investments. The work of the assessment was completed from May through December of 2018, with the public release of the report in January of 2019. Following the release of the report, there was an online webinar for community members, as well as an in-person community presentation in Longmont, Colorado. Finally, we're creating this recorded webinar to ensure that high-level assessment findings are easily accessible to community members at any point. This figure provides a snapshot of primary needs assessment methods. First, a community survey was administered through which 313 stakeholders offered their perspectives on access to IDD information and services and needs and priorities for supports and services. People with IDD, family members of people with IDD, other community members and service providers all participated. The full breakdown of these groups can be seen in the report. Next, 61 participants, many of whom are family members of people with IDD, attended community forums to have dialogue together around needs and gaps in IDD services and supports. Focus groups and interviews were also used to gather feedback from 21 participants with IDD, five additional family members, and 38 systems professionals working in the field. Omni and Keystone also reviewed literature and other information for best and emerging practices in IDD service provision, as well as relevant policies and rules. Finally, an analysis of Medicaid data was conducted to explore trends in Medicaid utilization for Boulder County. For this presentation, we really want to highlight the top three areas related to stakeholder feedback. Information on the literature review and Medicaid data analysis can be found in the full report. Some overarching themes are important to mention before we get into more detail. Community members with IDD, family members, providers, advocates, all were very positive about the opportunity to provide feedback and supportive of the process in general. Feedback was sought from all of these groups in the very initial phase of this work to think through the methods used for the assessment and how to ensure that perspectives from all of these groups were well represented. First, community stakeholders stress the need for ongoing community input to inform decisions related to IDD funding and service provision. They expressed great enthusiasm to take part in the assessment and ensure that community voices were heard. Family members and people with IDD in particular really emphasize that input needs to be ongoing rather than something that ends with a one-time assessment. 
Second, stakeholders repeatedly emphasized the importance of ensuring programs and services supported by mill levy funds were tangible and that program impacts were monitored. Some stakeholders had concerns that funds can appear to be subsumed by existing systems. So while they agree these systems are often doing great work, they want to know more about how mill levy funds in particular are used and how impacts are monitored. Despite the focus of this whole process on community needs and uncovering gaps and potential areas for improvement, stakeholders often took the time still to share their positive experiences or perceived strengths of the system. Some top themes emerged related to community strengths. First, people talked a lot about the power of positive support, of engagement with peers and mentorship, along with co-advocacy and information sharing. This was often talked about as sort of peer-to-peer, -peer, individuals with IDD or family-to-family. -family. Another area of strength that people with IDD and family members mentioned quite a bit was self-advocacy trainings, as these trainings had equipped many individuals with IDD to better use their voices and to protect themselves when things like safety concerns or personal rights issues arose and overall just fostered greater independence and kind of engagement in the community. There were also a lot of positive experiences with service providers in Boulder County. This was shared as some stakeholders noted specific individuals working within organizations who had shown care, respect, investment, and just overall expertise. Getting into some of the priority needs. First, issues related to the overall functioning of IDD service systems, as well as how people with IDD access needed services were ongoing themes in both the survey and stakeholder dialogue. Stakeholder dialogue emphasized that a lack of clear information about available services, along with difficult processes for determining eligibility, often prevented timely access. A number of survey items assessed the perceived accessibility of services, including whether individuals with IDD generally have access to what they need. It also assessed the ease of access, timeliness, and clarity of the requirements and processes. In this area, the process to get services, that is paperwork and documentation, was the lowest rated survey item in this area by family members, by community members, and by providers. So navigating the complex issues related to service information and how to get needed services, this was all a very heavy theme in both dialogue and surveys. Here are the overarching themes and how the full needs assessment report is structured. The larger report really digs deep into each of these areas and what people said, some of the nuances within the feedback, et cetera. These are ordered here by the level of priority. So across survey items, interviews, and dialogue, these are ordered by the most frequently raised issues. Number one is housing. Stakeholders raised concerns about a lack of access to clear information regarding options and choices for safe, accessible, and affordable housing. Quality of care in home settings was also mentioned frequently. Again, there are lots of nuances in here and many different issues uh, raised in the full report, but it's likely not surprising that this was a top identified need for Boulder County. Systems navigation, case management, and advocacy. Supplementing case management services with systems navigation and advocacy was repeatedly mentioned by stakeholders as a core need. This related a lot to access issues as well. So getting needed information, understanding options, completing all of those difficult um, steps. It also um, talked about larger provider workforce issues such as high staff turnover, training gaps. These were all issues that were mentioned quite a bit as reasons for the gaps in this area. Mental health was another. So access to qualified providers was the most common theme related to mental health, specifically having providers that are trained to both identify and work effectively with people with IDD. Mental health services that are responsive to people with IDD and their needs. Self-advocacy, engagement, and social connectedness. Stakeholders voiced needs for increased opportunities for people with IDD to be engaged and represented in the community. This was a particularly heavy theme among folks with IDD. 
They also shared interest in self-advocacy trainings and leadership skill building events. Another big theme was a lack of community awareness about the IDD community by key groups such as first responders, legal services, victim centers, recreation centers, and local businesses. Finally, the need to collect ongoing data and monitor changes in policy was repeatedly mentioned. Stakeholders also voiced a desire for increased accountability measures, including transparency about funding and program expenditures. Going to turn it over now to Larez Meinhold from Keystone to talk about the recommendations. Great, thank you, Emily. So we're gonna now dig into a little bit some of the recommendations and all of these recommendations were developed with careful consideration of stakeholder feedback, but along with a larger policy context related to intellectual and developmental disability services, uh, both the service itself, funding and provision. They're intended to provide a broad range of options. Um, some build upon existing programs or infrastructure, while others would require innovations um, or pilot efforts. Uh, the, each recommendation area aligns with the core priorities identified by stakeholders. But although all recommendations um, cannot feasibly be implemented immediately, Boulder County Housing and Human Services developed estimated timelines and phases for the work that can be found in the full report. So the, the first area we're gonna hit on is housing, affordable accessible housing, really about increasing local affordable accessible housing options for individuals with IDD specifically. Um, these are a lot of conversations that are going on in Boulder generally around affordable accessible housing, but how can people and individuals with IDD be forefront in the mind as those conversations are happening. Safety mechanisms, enhancing safety mechanisms in the current host home model in Boulder County. Guidelines and requirements for host homes exist, but regulation and inspections aren't currently um, adequate. Um, they don't really meet the needs right now. Uh, innovation, funding innovative pilot approaches to housing, allowing family support grants to support establishing shared family housing. The next recommendation area is really related to systems, navigation, case management, and advocacy. So really looking for that direct funding for specific systems, navigation, and or advocacy efforts for individuals. Um, really undertaking a provider capacity and availability study so that we understand what is the current supply in the county for case managers, mental health providers, and others. Um, but then also recognizing um, how do we build that case management capacity through expanded options and choices through case management, um, through multiple service providers. Uh, looking at navigation and advocacy, direct funding to systems navigation and or advocacy efforts. We know how important that advocacy is to the community. Family advocates fund programs to recruit and train family, paid family advocates who have acquired critical lived experience in system navigation. And again, we've heard over and over again about the need for um, resources and tools uh, to be located in a centralized online repository for IDD related information so that not each family member is having to rely on another family member or another person with IDD or an advocate to understand how to navigate this, but how can that information be centralized and easily ac accessed for people? The next area is mental health. Really looking, um, as we said, carrying over that capacity study so we understand what is the current capacity of mental health providers for people with IDD? What is the current need for services, for mental health services for people with IDD? And then expanding training and development of the mental health workforce to increase the availability of providers, qualified and able to serve individuals with IDD. In addition to that, Boulder, uh, looking at Boulder's wraparound service, the high fidelity wraparound, and to expand that to people with IDD to help them navigate mental health services. The next set of recommendations around self-advocacy, community engagement, and social connectedness. So first, self-advocacy training increase funding for self-advocacy training so people with IDD can be their own best advocates. Then there's ongoing consultation from people with IDD. Create a formal process for seeking and promoting 
consultation from leaders and self-advocates within the IDD community. Social and recreational, increasing funding for social and recreational programming to enhance social connectedness. Again, we know when people are connected, they're healthier and they're happier. And then community engagement, promoting opportunities for people with IDD and their families to engage in forums and environments that might be and are often harder to access, like theater and arts, and could even look at funding directed to um, expand recreation programs that provide opportunities for individuals with IDD to participate in sports and other activities with their peers. Then we're moving on to education and, and awareness. So how do we invest in training and specific referral processes for key systems and community organizations, including emergency response and crisis systems, local homeless shelters, mental health providers, law enforcement, and others? so that they have a better understanding of the needs of people with IDD and community needs related to IDD, as well as developing a general disability awareness training that can be tailored for local businesses and other community spaces. Then the last area we'll talk about recommendations is ongoing monitoring and evaluation. So while this uh, might come last in the recommendations, part of it was tying back to some of the very first slides where people with IDD and their family members talked about the importance of them being included in the process going forward, not just hearing their voice in terms of this needs assessment, but how do we make sure the voice is included as uh, projects get funded so that people know about both um, can can sort of rank the highest need as well as make sure people know about what's getting funded. So one of those first things is developing a community advisory council for fiscal decision making, advising on that decision making and monitoring of funded efforts, looking, um, so just make sure that all these efforts are as transparent as they need to be. Um, there's also, there was a request for this ongoing data collection about disability and service needs for the community level. So how do we know sort of what's being done, what's the data related to that, as well as how do we increase evaluation reporting requirements for all funded programs to include system-wide metrics and outcomes to know how we are making progress on those systemic and individual changes. And then related to policy changes, um, how do we make sure that uh, Boulder County Housing and Human Services continues to monitor state and federal policy changes. And as those changes create changes in the needs, how do we make sure that then these dollars are being used to make sure we best uh, address those? So making sure that we understand what are those changes at a state and federal level. And then finally, um, just creating that accountability around mill levy expenses. How do we better define eligible and allowable activities and expenses under the mill levy. And so uh, Boulder County Housing and Human Services will need some time to really plan and prioritize, as well as build internal infrastructure to be able to begin to address the recommendations. Uh, they do plan to develop the advisory board, which will help craft longer term planning. Um, but this report and recommendations will be an evolving piece of their work over time. Um, Boulder County Housing and Human Services expects to have those next steps outlined by April 2019. Um, and as you see from the Boulder County Housing and Human Services website, there's a link there. And the link down below well, where the report is located will actually be where you can sort of follow up and stay engaged and involved. Uh, both my contact information and Emily's is here as well. If there's questions about either anything referenced in the webinar or the report, we're happy to be a resource for you. And again, wanna thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this effort, not just now to hear what's going on and what are the recommendations, but ongoing to make sure that the mill levy best meets the needs of the community of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Thanks so much.